In this A-level IB biology video, we're going to be taking another ecosystems topic, and that is the topic of energy loss. And really, we're going to be talking about why over 90% of energy is lost at each stage of the food chain. Just to remind you of the structure of a food chain, remember that they start with a producer, which uses photosynthesis to produce organic compounds. So remember that's plants, algae, and photosynthetic bacteria. Only those ones, not all bacteria photosynthesize. So our starting point with our food chain is the producer. The next stage of that food chain is the primary consumer. That's followed by a secondary consumer, then a tertiary consumer, and then finally a quaternary consumer. But only very rarely do food chains consist of five trophic levels. Usually there is no quaternary consumer. What is the reason for that? Well, that's because of the huge amount of energy loss which occurs between each stage of the food chain. Because if we know that 90% of energy is lost between the producer and the primary consumer, the same is true between the primary consumer and the secondary consumer. It's repeated between the secondary and tertiary consumer. And effectively, that energy just runs out. And so for most food chains, no quaternary consumer exists. Only rarely does it exist if you're talking about a food chain which is supported by the sea, and that's because so much of the sun reaches the waters of the sea, the algae, the plankton, so sometimes a quaternary consumer can be supported. But why is so much energy lost? And that's what we're going to discuss now. I'm going to use this small food chain on the right-hand side to help demonstrate my point, but let's take that producer grass. Why is not all the energy from the grass passed on to the rabbit? Well, that's because some part of the organism is indigestible, e.g. the grass root. Notice that cellulose, which makes up plant cell walls, is indigestible by humans and therefore passes out of the body as species. So clearly if it's going to leave the human body as species, that has not been absorbed by the human, so it has not contributed its energy towards the human. The second reason for huge energy losses is simply because some parts of the organism are not eaten. And for many organisms, the gallbladder is particularly unpalatable, Hair is unpalatable, as is bone. And a final and pretty obvious point to make is that some organisms die before they can even be eaten. And that's obviously due to a number of reasons. A, they don't want to be eaten. So in the case of the rabbit and the fox, the rabbit evades the fox, it runs away. Some become diseased due to pathogens, so die from those sorts of causes. Some rabbits might get run over by a car. There's no way of knowing that the fox is going to eat every single rabbit within a community. So let's highlight the key points for energy loss. Firstly, we said parts of the organism may be indigestible. Secondly, we said simply some parts aren't eaten. And thirdly, some organisms die before they can be eaten. However, don't worry, it's not like that energy just disappears. Remember, there are plenty of other organisms which are happy to make the most of this lost energy through those three reasons previously described. And those are the saprotrophs and detrivores which remember both feed on dead matter in different ways, but for sure they feed on dead matter. And therefore the energy from those organisms is passed to both the saprotrophs and the detrophores. Remember that these are also able to feed on faeces. So every time faeces are produced, yes, that energy is not transferred to the next organism in the food chain, but it certainly passes to the saprotrophs and detrivores. So lastly, other energy losses are due to animal activities as opposed to parts of them being indigestible, not eaten, etc. So number one, respiration, is a huge reason for energy loss, because remember that releases energy, which is needed for muscle contraction. If it's a warm-blooded animal, that will be needed to maintain the body temperature, so thermoregulation. So that energy is converted to heat, which sadly, cannot be converted back to the chemical energy because remember chemical energy is the type of energy found in all food and so fundamentally there's a net loss of energy in food all food chains how is it replaced where does it all come from well the original source 99 percent of the time is the sun